Hi, my name is Mr. Peck from Ideas Inc. School and I am here today to discuss about the reflection of light. We will first have to learn the two laws of reflection. Number one, the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. Number two, the incident ray, normal and reflected ray must all lie on the same plane at the point of incidence. Let's take a look at the diagram to better understand the laws. The incident ray is a light ray that comes from a source. When the incident ray strikes a location on a surface, the area is known as the point of incidence. From this point, an imaginary line known as a normal is produced. It is important to note that this imaginary normal must be perpendicular to the surface. The angle of incidence is then found by measuring the angle between the incident ray and the normal. Due to the first law of reflection, we know that the angle of incidence is equivalent to the angle of reflection. Thus, we can replicate the angle using a protractor and produce a reflected ray coming out from the point of incidence. Lastly, the angle of reflection is found between the reflected ray and the imaginary normal. Next, we will move on to the different types of reflections that can occur. There are two types, regular and diffuse reflections. Let's start with regular reflections. This occurs when parallel rays of light fall on a smooth surface. Due to the nature of the flat surface, each reflected light ray will also be parallel and traveling in the same direction. Images formed by regular reflection will be clear and distinct, just like images seen from polished metal surfaces or from the calm surface of water bodies. The other type of reflection is known as diffuse or scattered reflections. This occurs when parallel rays of light fall onto a rough surface instead. Since the incident rays strike the uneven surface at different angles of incidence, the reflected ray produced will end up going in many different directions. But regardless, please note that the laws of reflections are still being obeyed. Take a look at the diagram to have a better understanding. Let's zoom in on one of the reflections that I have chosen. When the incident ray struck the curved surface, an imaginary line known as a tangent is drawn. This line will act as our flat surface. Also, recall that the location where the incident ray hits the surface is known as the point of incidence. And from this point, another imaginary line called the normal is produced. The normal will bisect the large angle between the incident ray and reflected ray. So if we measure the angle of incidence on the left and compare it with the angle of reflection on the right, we will find that they are equal and hence the laws were obeyed. In the next part of the chapter, we will discuss about the characteristics of images formed by a plane mirror. There are a total of five characteristics. Number one, the perpendicular distance between the object and mirror must be equal to the perpendicular distance between the mirror and image. Number two, the images produced are of the same size and shape. Number three, the images produced are laterally inverted, meaning that the left and right side of the object appear to swap positions. Number four, the images produced are all upright. And lastly, number five, the images produced by plane mirrors are virtual. But what is a virtual image? This is an image that cannot be captured on a screen. The opposite of a virtual image is a real image. A good example to represent real images is when we watch movies in a cinema. The images that we see on the screen in front of us are real images produced by a projector. So how can we see an image that isn't real? This is because our brains can only perceive and interpret light rays that are traveling in straight lines into our eyes. Therefore, due to this assumption, our brains will make us believe that light is coming from an image on the opposite side of the mirror. It is also because of this reason that the images we see appear to be laterally inverted. There are other optical illusions that are caused by assumptions made by our brains. These include the famous Penrose staircase, where the stairs trick us into thinking that it leads up and down normally when it does not. Another optical illusion is the popular Ames room that is often found in optical illusion museums. This room is specially built with an angled floor and ceiling to create an illusion that make people appear larger or smaller than they actually are. Now we shall learn how to easily sketch a ray diagram. Let's learn the Pecky's three-step method. Step one, always draw the image first. Take note that if the object is found outside the mirror, we can extend an imaginary mirror to accommodate it. The purpose of this line is to help us measure the object and image distance which are perpendicular to the mirror. Step two, we will draw a line connecting the image to the eye. When doing so, please note that the line on the imaginary side of the mirror must be drawn using dotted lines while the line shown on the real side must be drawn using solid straight lines. The dotted line is to indicate light appearing to come from the virtual image on the other side of the mirror. This light beam isn't real and is simply an interpretation by our brains. Lastly, step 3, we will connect the solid line from the object to the point of incidence. This line shows the actual light ray that originated from the object. In the next part of the chapter, we will discuss about the applications of plane mirrors. 
ever wondered why the word ambulance is printed backwards on the vehicle? This is because when drivers observe an ambulance behind us from the rear view mirror, the word would be inverted to show the correct orientation of those letters. Another use of plane mirrors is found in periscopes. They are used to observe dangerous chemical reactions in laboratories and used in military tanks to observe their surroundings. This device uses two plane mirrors which are inclined at 45 degrees. The second mirror is used to reverse the laterally inversion caused by the first mirror. As a result, the final image seen by the observer will have no lateral inversion. Now, let's address the viral video of people claiming that mirrors need to, quote unquote, see an object first before any reflection can take place. Let's debunk this silly notion by taking a look at the diagram shown. There is a piece of opaque paper between the object and the mirror, preventing the mirror from seeing the object. We will follow Pecky's three-step method when drawing the ray diagram. We begin by first drawing the image on the other side of the mirror. Next, we will draw a line connecting the image to the observer's eye. And lastly, we will connect the light ray originating from the object to the point of incidence. If done correctly, we will notice that light coming from the object can reflect off the mirror at a steep angle and reach the observer's eye, allowing the individual to see the image even though the mirror has not, quote unquote, seen it. Now on to the last part of the chapter, we will be discussing about concave and convex mirrors. Concave mirrors bulges inwards. These types of mirrors produce images which are virtual, magnified, upright and laterally inverted. This is because concave mirrors refocuses parallel light rays towards a focal point. Or it can also cause light from a source to be reflected off its surface as parallel rays. That is why this type of mirror are often used in cosmetic mirrors, magnifying glass and dentist mirrors where an enlarged image needs to be produced. This type of mirror are also used in vehicle headlights to reflect light from bulbs in order to produce strong beams of light. Convex mirrors on the other hand bends outwards. This type of mirror produces images which are virtual, diminished, upright, laterally inverted and distorted. The reason is because convex mirrors cause light from a source to scatter in different directions as the incident rays hit the curved surface at different angle of incidence. Convex mirrors are used as car mirrors or security mirrors in our local convenience store as they can give us a wider field of view. We have come to the end of the chapter. If you liked the video, please remember to like, share and follow all our socials. Look forward to more educational videos like this one. Thank you for listening and have a nice day.